Hello, Neil. Hey, Bart. Thanks for having me. No problem, Neil. All right. Neil, you got a high stakes hand here, don't you? Yeah. It's a hand out of talking stick out here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Awesome. So talking stick, Neil, also a COP sub. I don't know if you know a guy named Andrew, who's a reg that plays there. He works in the baseball industry, but he's a good friend of mine. I'm actually based out of Michigan. I'm just out here for March. So I've been playing out here um, in Arizona. Are you spring training? Uh, no, just trying to get out of Michigan. It's uh, better yeah. weather down here. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. All right, what's the size of the game? So the game is ten twenty, and the forty dollars straddle's been on for probably three or four hours at this point. So it's got to be the biggest game in the room, right? Do they yeah. usually run this game this large? So I was talking to the guys there, and they run this game every Tuesday and Friday. Oh, okay. And so I assume like it's that. uncapped, right? No, it's actually a $7,500 cap. Hmm. Well, that's like probably the largest cap I've ever heard of. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a weird deal. I mean, I've always said like I loved my favorite game playing in LA was 1025 with a 2500 cap. It was 510 mandatory 25, but what a great game that was because the cap was really good for the game. It kept the sort of some of the crushers away because they wouldn't play in a capped game. But at, at 7,500, I mean, in essence, it's almost uncapped. Unless the game was always playing 10, 20, 40 all the time. The times I've played it, when it gets bigger, it's, the straddle's usually on, at least one straddle, sometimes two. Um, and it's not, it's a time rate game, so it's not like the cap's enforced, really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, if somebody came and sat down with 10 grand, I don't think anybody would say anything. Because it's a time game? Yeah, they let the players kind of run okay. their own game. Oh, because everything else is raked. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, 510 and, and 1020 are uh, both time rake. Okay. So start us off here. So I am under the go. Oh, actually, I am. I have 13,500 ish in front of me. So 13,5K effective. Okay. Yep. And I am under the gun or first act after the straddle. And. The standard raise size has been 100. Like everybody's been raising to 100 for hours, like as long as the straddle is on. So I raised to 100 with Ace King of Spades. So, and you're under the gun, is that right? Yeah. All right. So, Hero, Ace King of Spades to 100. Okay. The guy left to me is the villain in the hand, and he's been playing back at me a lot, a ton of three betting. Um, mid twenties, aggressive guy, uh, splashy. He has me covered. He three bets to three hundred from plus one. Yeah. So plus one three bets to three hundred. Kind of a small three bet sizing. I mean, when you're that deep too. That was just super standard as far as sizing, like one hundred for a, a raise and then three hundred for a three bet. It folds all the way back around to me, and I four bet to a thousand. So you guys are really, really deep. Here at 10, 20, 40. I mean, you're, I guess it's just over 300 big blinds deep. And I've talked about this too. I mean, theory, where I have learned the pre flop theory and the way that you balance, like putting in the extra bet, is you're supposed to do it with aces all the time. And then ace king suited as sort of a, pro, like a sort of value ish type of um, play. But king king is not four bet all the time. And sometimes it's even as little as 50-50 in a very, very tight configuration. What would you have done with king-king here? I would have probably three bet. Four four bet, you mean? Four bet, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, The game was super loose and splashy. I think he probably calls with a huge range of hands here. I mean, my only thought was, was that, again, I've talked about this too, when you get very super, super deep, there becomes this weird thing where you are at such a positional disadvantage that you actually want to keep the pot small from out of position. It just looks like a lot of money, but if you're playing 10, 20, 40, you're not like a thousand big blinds deep. So if you're comfortable playing this and you think he's going to call way too wide in a spot like this, then it's just like a pure four bet for value. I'm just saying that I might not always four bet here, but then you're going to have to hold on here too. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's, it's probably a four bet though. Most of the time I would say, and I assume he calls. He does call. So if we go to the flop with 2070 in the pot. Okay. So the flop, 
I absolutely crushed the flop. It's ace of clubs, eight of spades, and two of spades. Ace of clubs, eight of spades, two of spades. You have ace, king of spades. Yep. So you flop top pair, top kicker, not flush draw. Yeah. Yep. Well, and then remember, I mean, especially if you're playing at this level here, Neil, I don't know. Are you like, uh, do you, how old a guy are you? I'm early 40s. Okay. So you're like my age. It's not old, not middle. I, I don't even think that, I don't consider that even middle age. Um, what I was going to, the reason why I said that was, you know, sometimes these young guys, like they have different images of, of different players. But, you know, in a four bet pot, we've talked about this many times too. You're, you're supposed to be doing a lot of C betting, a ton of C betting on all but the most coordinated board. So you should probably be C betting your entire range almost for the same sizing here in a four bat pot. I don't know off the top of my head. I don't see Nate here in the live chat because these spots come up so rarely. Like if people start to diverge and take two sizings in a four bet pot, because usually you're just not that deep, right? Where it doesn't matter. But I mean, you're supposed to be betting pretty much everything you're going to four bet with. And you would, you, you know, bluffs, even king, king, queen, queen, jack, jack, and ace, right? Yeah, I think so. And I was I was thinking I needed to make a range bet here, but I wanted to go super small just because I have so much of the board covered. I actually misclicked it a little bit. I wanted to go like 20 to 25% pot and I ended up only betting 300. So a super small C bet. <laughs> it's funny because Nate, one of our, you know, guy who designed Solve for Live over on Crush Live Poker, he is in the live chat. Again, Nate, if you didn't hear my question, I'll get some real-time response. Do you do you have two sizings in a four bet pot sometimes when you're this deep here? It starts to get very, very complicated. But yeah, I mean, in theory, it's like 20, 25%. And I, I can see starting having some increased sizing when you're much deeper, but it's like, it's, you guys actually aren't even all that. You could still get the money in rather easily. Like even if you bet 25% for like 500 and he calls pots like 3,000, you know, you're at like 11.5, you get about four SPRs left. You could still go close to pot, close to pot and get all the money in. But you say you did a live misclick and bet 300. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Well, he's going to be calling with a lot of stuff, <laughs> right? Yeah, I think basically he calls with most of his range there. I, I probably fold out some like red suited connectors that he has. But other than that, I think he calls with a lot of his range. So Nate said, and again, this isn't necessarily optimal, that he usually goes one quarter or half. And I would, if, if our options were one quarter or half, I'm just saying here, Neil, just say that our options are one quarter or half. I would actually take half here because I still think that any pair is still going to call to half as opposed to one quarter. I'm talking about any a pair that does not, you know, does not include an ace. When you start going one quarter, you start, you would start to get probably more of the backdoor Broadway backdoor club draw types of holdings to call. So you bet 300 and he calls. Yep. So the turn is the nine of spades. Okay. Turns the nine of spades. By the way, there's, there, there's probably some frequency of him wanting to rate, maybe not on an A side board, but when you go so small, he probably has some raises here too that are counterintuitive on the flop, even in a four bat pot. I'm just sort of talking out loud. So the pot is 2670. And the turn here is the nine of spades. So you make it here. You got the stone cold nuts. Yeah. And this is kind of where I deviate from what I probably should do. But this game has been so aggressive and so splashy that I had checked. Like every time I checked a turn for pot control, like I would just get blasted into. So I actually, because I have the board so crushed and I was kind of thinking I was only going to get two streets of value here. And, and I'm probably thinking about that wrong, but I actually decided to check this turn. See, off the top of my head here, I would say that the larger I went on the flop, if we were talking about quarter or half, the larger I, w I went on the flop, the more checking I would do on the turn, even if I had the stone cold nuts. But the smaller you went on the flop, the more betting I would do on the turn because he's just calling with so many different types of hands. Now, I guess somebody could play devil's advocate and say, well, he needs to start like his float bets here with like nine, 10 of clubs. But still, you still want, I mean, there still has to be some betting though that you might, I mean, it's not always going to be 
represented because it's a very, very tight configuration here. So it's not like there's a ton of flushes from either perspective, you know? Yeah, he has a couple of flushes. I thought that some of the hands that he would call with, he would also bet here if I checked to him. Like if he had pocket eights or if he had like queen jack of spades, like hands like that, um, or I guess any spades would probably bet here. And then I could, depending on the size and either, you know, check call or check raise. There's another, uh, this is a fair point here too. A nice uh, comment from somebody in the live chat that I just saw here a second ago, where if you had a hand like ace five, so remember this is a four bet pot, right? So it's like, you know, the ranges are very tight. If you ever throw in like a four bet, if you ever had a ace five suited here, you'd rather have ace five of spades than ace king of spades here. It's because it gives him gives him more opportunity to have, you know, a high spade. So you check, okay. And he pretty quickly checks back. And then my so he, check check. My question here before we get to the river is if he were to take like a protectionish, like say he were to take like a one third sizing here, what we like to call like variable turn sizing on CLP, although this is not a blank, so it's not a great example, but Say he took like a seven, eight hundred, nine hundred, something like that on the turn. You're, you know, you got the nuts. You've checked the turn. You misclick small on the flop. What was your plan for the rest of the hand if he bet, say, like eight, nine hundred here on the turn? So I think if he bets small on the turn, it it definitely leans him more towards value, and so I would probably click it back. Like if he bet eight hundred and I came back at him at like eighteen hundred or two thousand, just so I could lead the river. If he goes bigger, then I can probably just check call. So you're going to, so you're, if he goes large, you're just going to play check call, check raise on blanks at the end. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like one of these things where it's, it's such an un, it's, it's such an uncommon spot that you don't really even necessarily know what to do because it's like, how often are you check raising the turn in a four bet pot? As the pre-flop four better as a bluff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, Virtually never. I, so it's like if you check raise turn, it's just so strong. Because you just don't have that many hands. Like what's the bluff? You know, kings, kings with the king of spades that's starting a bluff. But you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't try to, you wouldn't really choose that hand to check raise though. It's too strong, right? Wouldn't you think? Yeah. After you bet 300 on the flop and now you've, you know, so it's. Yeah. The, the flop misclick kind of set me up in a bad position for the rest of the hand. It made it an interesting hand. The reason why I bring that up is that that's why like, I'm not in love with the check on the turn because you kind of want to check raise because you want to get money in the pot, right? With the best hand. But it's such an extreme situation that like, you just have absolutely no bluffs. I'm not saying you personally, but so I, I feel like you're just bluff caught more often by playing it straight up. And you can build a bigger pot by playing it straight up. You see what I'm saying? Like betting out on the turn, especially after the small misclick. But it goes check, check. The pot remains 2670. Yep. And the river comes the eight of diamonds. So the river is the eight of diamonds. So it pairs the board. You no longer have the nuts. Yeah. And it's ace, eight, deuce. Again, hero four bat with ace, king of spades. Uh, he misclicks small call, turns the nine of spades, made the stone cold nuts. Check, check on the turn. And now the river is the eight of diamonds. Because what I was going to say was, was that if this goes check, check, like it did on the turn, man, you, you got to make up for your lost value, right? Like if, if the river was like a brick, like an offsuit three, I would hope you would go at least pot at the end here. Yeah, I think I would go big on a blank, but I decided to bet 1200. You would have gone bigger on a blank? I think so. I would have tried to make up some value. Do you think, don't you think, though, like this is very close to a blank, even though it does pair the board in this tight configuration? The way that this hand has played out, I mean? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I wouldn't be this scared about just the fact that you don't have the nuts anymore. I, I still would want to target, I would still want to target an, another ace here. I don't think it really changes that much, to be honest with you. Even though the board pairs like two thirds or three quarters here, I think I probably would have made the same bet size that I was planning on, anyways. Maybe, maybe just the tad smaller. But when you really take a look at the ranges in a very extreme scenario, I just don't know. 
how much that 8x really makes that much of a difference. And by the way, too, I mean, it would be very wide. Could he ever have slivers of like 7, 8 suited or something? I mean, those hands are all going to call no matter what, but I'm, I'm talking about targeting the ace. I mean, I don't know. You, because you go 1,200 here. I guess my question is, is that like, if he's got like, say, 10s through kings, is he, is he going to find a call here for 1,200? And if he's not, but he's going to call close to pot with ace X because the way the hand played out, maybe betting larger is a better bet size. So I bet twelve hundred. He doesn't think for too long, and he raises to five thousand. So plus one raises to five thousand. Now I'm never ever thinking about folding here. By the way, I'll, I'll just break that to you guys. <laughs> it's kind of similar to like the the first hand. I'm I'm uh, the first thing I'm looking at is is that can we ever re raise here? Yeah, the in, in game it was it was either call or jam. Right, right. And and I'm just kind of looking at the stack sizes. So you go you go twelve hundred, he goes five thousand. So I mean, what do we if he was trying to do something like really, really tricky here with like a smaller flush? If he was doing something tricky with a smaller flush and you come back over the top for like a four bet jam, I almost feel like if he's any type of player, he should fold. You have the ace and the king of spades in your hand, so He's not going to have the second nut flush, right? Like it would have to be some sort of suited connector, like queen jack of spit. So it would have to be a situation where in order for him, a lot of things would have to go really your way in order to get called here if you were to jam. He would have to, you know, call the four bat. Okay, he'll call the four bat. Just call the flop. Maybe, okay. Check the turn, by the way, right? With a made flush. Check the turn with a made flush. And now raise the river. When you can have aces full here as played. So if you come back over the top for a four bet, it gets, I don't know if you can get called by worse. I don't know if you can get called by worse. I thought one of the most likely hands he could have had would be nine, eight, like a red nine, eight that floated the flop that then boated up. But, but doesn't that bet off on the turn though? I don't know when the, if the flush comes in, does he bet that off on the turn? That's really the one hand. Like pocket nines would bet off, pocket eights would bet off at some point. Made flushes bet off. Here's the thing, Neil. From if like if I'm playing against you and I'm in your opponent's perspective, you don't have that many flushes when you four bet pre. I mean, you can have ace x of spades, okay. But I mean, even look at your own range, right? Like what? what how do you construct a four betting range pre flop? Like what do you have here when you four bet pre? Probably queens plus ace king suited. Ace King suited because I'm out of position, probably Ace King off. Uh, Ace Queen suited. Okay, so Ace Queen suited. Do you ever throw in like a bluff with like Ace Five suited? Do one of those plays? Maybe. So the reason why I bring that up is, is that even if we were to give you Ace King suited, Ace Queen suited, and Ace Five suited, that's only three specific hands here that are flushes on the turn. And you've and you just said yourself that you're four betting a ton of Ace King off, anyways. So you can see why betting eight, nine would be the right play there on the turn, right? Yeah. From, I mean, it just makes sense against that range. So, so all I thought about in game was whether I could get better to fold, no matter how he got there, even if he doesn't get there with many hands, if any hands that are better, I don't think I'm ever getting a boat to fold there no I, I mean i think that's just one of these ones yeah i don't think that you need to take ace king suited and turn it into a bluff here <laughs> and i don't think i'm getting anything worse to call and i think that there's might be some bluffs here too just because of the way that this hand went down i mean people are shouting in the live chat polar polar and i tend to agree i mean if this is polarized to a boat or a bluff then it's definitely just a call and again what i was saying at the top about you know, these weird scenarios where you might be up against a smaller flush. You don't even know. Those are so, those get here like, you have to check back the turn. And then the fact that he might fold at the end, you know, leans this towards you don't want to re-raise. I don't know if people are folding, um, if people are ever folding boats. But again, like it's so, it's really, really hard for the guy to have a boat though as played because, you know, Quad eights, again, I, I look at all of those hands bet off on the turn. If he had eight, eight, nine, nine, or even ace, eight, 
I mean, I, I don't know if it makes that much of a difference. Say he three bet you with like ace eight of hearts. You know, he called and then decided to slow play the flop with top two. I, I don't think I'd be checking back much there on the turn because of the reasons that we stated, Nate, about like the four betting ranges. So it's kind of hard for me to envision this guy really having many boats here, which is why I would never, ever dream of folding. But I think we've talked it through where it's probably the right play to call. Yeah, for me, it was it was a pretty straightforward call. Okay, so hero calls and... He shows up with seven, eight of clubs. Well, we talked about him maybe having eight X too, right? Yep. I don't really want to go down this rabbit hole, but it's worth noting. You know the funny thing about this? Well, this is, again, the same type of deal where if you four bet all in and he's any type of, if you three bet all in on the river and he's any type of player, he should fold. You know, he's not blocking any of the aces full. Where the rabbit hole I was going to go was, was that, let's say that you didn't have ace king of spades. Let's say you just had like ace king and you played the hand the same way, right? You bet the, let's say you had ace king with the ace of spades here. Not ace king of spades, but ace king with the ace of spades. And you decided to bet, you misclicked the flop, you checked the turn and it went check, check. You're going to value bet the river, right? As played, I would assume. Yeah, I think the same yeah. bet too. Right, so you're going to value bet the river and now he raises you. And especially if you're holding the ace of spades, you're like, that's really strange, right? I would still probably have a hard time. I, I would still think that I'd probably still have a hard time folding for the same reasons that we talked about. The rabbit hole I wanted to go down was, was that the fact that if you, <laughs> if you came back over the top with ace king as a bluff, he might fold an eight. And you know he doesn't have the nut flush, right? Because you have the ace of spades in your hand. If you had ace king off with the ace of spades. Yeah, I guess it, get, it opens them up for one or two more combos of flushes. So yeah. Yeah. But that's an interesting one. I mean, do you, do you feel like you left money on the table after what he showed down? No, because I, I think he snap folds if I come over the top. And I, it's super results oriented, but I don't know how much more money. Like if I bet the turn, I don't. I think he folds out most of the he weaker part of his yeah. ranges here. Like I don't think he's calling an eight twice. Right. Um, especially when I'm a pretty tight player, um, I give action, but I mean, my range is pretty tight there, like you said, and he knows that. So, um, yeah, I don't think I get more than two streets of value for his hand that he ended up turning up with. Uh, but at the same time, you know, if I'm playing against his range, I probably could have put more money in. Would you have called on the river with ace king at the end? It's just a bluff catcher at that point, right? Yeah, sure. When you get raised, I mean, you're definitely, you said that just like I said, you definitely play that as a bet on the river for sure, right? Yeah. So what is it like 3,600 into nine grand? Yeah. I mean, you're betting what? So it's third, it would be 80, it would be 8,800, 2,800 for you to call, right? Yeah. No, 3,800 3, for me to call, 1,200 to 5,000. Sorry, yeah, 8,800, 3,800 for you to call. So I'm getting like two and a half to one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I probably close my eyes and throw in a call. Yeah. But it's interesting though how extreme it gets because if you f took an ace and four bet the, and three bet the river and you just get, and, you, and there's no way that you think he ever has a boat as played, you might even be able to get him to fold, you might get him to fold everything at the end, like literally everything. And then what I'm saying with the ace of spades, the reason why the, ace is, the only thing with the ace of spades is just that, you know, once in a while he squeaks in there, like playing some sort of tricky flush, but he doesn't have the nut flush if you check back turn and then you pile in his face on the river. <laughs> Usually you don't get into a situation where you take a bluff catcher and turn it into a bluff because what's the point, right? If someone's polarized and they're either bluffing and you call and you win or they're never folding. But this situation's so extreme you actually might get some value hands to fold. I just wanted to point that out. But um, thank you very much for the call. I appreciate it.